Hi everyone, welcome to another session with flight tying step by step. I've been working on a concept where I tie a Adams dry fly, but I'm substituting the materials. And in particular, I'm using a South African back called the Clipsprunger. It's a very, very nice material to work with. So it's not for our international viewers, but I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to tie two patterns. One is an emerger and the other one is dry fly. It's a little bit difficult to tie, but um, watch it, enjoy the videos, see if you can add some value by commenting on what your thoughts are on these flies. So let's get started. In the vise I've got a size 14 dry fly hook, and I'm going to use 70 denier brown thread. Just laying a thread base all the way to the end of the hook. I'm going to start with the emerger pattern and for that I'm going to take five or so fibers of the clip springer hair and use them for the tail. So I've just pulled them out and I'm just going to use my hair stacker just to line up those tips. So there I've taken five or so strands of the clips from a deer hair. I've lined up the tips and I'm just going to tie them in as the tail. It's not really a tail, it's more like the scat that is left behind when the mayfly emerges. So the length I'm going to make roughly the length of the shank of the hook. It's important to make your first wrap soft so you don't splay the hair and your second one also soft but a little bit tighter and then your third one you can go tighter and tighter if you don't do it like that your hair will your deer hair will just splay like the stems here and we don't want that so there is the Check. I'm just going back. Just make sure that your fibers are nice on top of your hook. And I'm just flattening out my thread so that I don't cut into the deer hair. With that done, we are going to take round about <coughs> half a pencil to a pencil size of deer hair and we are going to create the wings with that. As I said, I'm using a size 14, so you will have to adjust your amounts of hair by the size of the hook you are going to tie it on. Again, I'm just putting the hair in the hair stacker, lining up those tips. Just make sure that you take out any fluff or under fur as it's called so that it doesn't bulk up your fly and trap water. So there I have my stack of clip springer here. Again I'm going to go round about the length of the shank and I'm going to tie it round about two millimeters behind the eye of the hook. I'm going to advance my thread to the front and just do a pinch wrap and you need to have the right thread for this. You don't want to cut into your deer hair and cut it off but you also don't want it to spin around the shank of the hook. So um, now what I'm going to do is seeing that my here are now on top of my hook shank. I'm going to advance my thread to the back and as I go along I'm going to pinch out the stems of the deer hair creating a taper to the bend of the hook. So as I advance I'm just taking out some of those fibers 
it is a bit tedious to do it but it creates a beautiful tapered body to your fly every, every so few wraps pinching out a few fibers don't worry about the tips standing out we'll trim them a little bit later what I'll do here is I'll pull on the thread it will lift up those fibers just make it easier to break out so you don't break your tail or your scud okay I'm just going to make sure that all my deer hair fibers are on top of the hook shank and I'm just going to also build a taper for this fly. Again I'm flattening my thread. I don't want to create too much bulk. But I also want to get a good tapered body going. I'm just checking that all my fibers are nice and flat on top of my hook shank. Looks good. For the body I'm going to use a short pico coal. So um, they are quite fragile so we are going to glue them or seal them with Sally Hansen making sure my thread is nice and flat just check that you don't splay your tail too much in the process of tying in the materials so with a pico curl I'm just going to make touching turns I don't think it will be so easily seen on the video with a brown thread that I'm using but you do get a very nice segmentation with a pico hole. The reason I'm using pico hole for the body and also putting on Sally Hansen's hardest nails is I want a very sleek and solid body that's also quite shiny and it must not it must not absorb any water I want it to sink so that you get your body submerged under the water your scud also lying in the water and then your thorax and your head above the water just breaking that away and I'll just add my Sally Hansen and let it dry Okay, great. Now that the body has been set, it's dry, we can continue with the rest of the fly. So for the hackle, I've selected two cock hackles, one in brown and one in gold. And we are going to palm them around the 
tips program. So I'm tying them in at the tip and the dull side is facing towards me. So I'm just going to pull back on those deer here so that I can create some space in the front to tie in my hackle. And a neat little trick that I saw on the internet was to take a straw, just a normal straw, maybe let me just So it's just a piece of straw and you cut through it in the length and what you do is you slip it over your thread like that and you push it over your hackle and that just holds your hackle back and gives you some space to work with. A neat little hack. So I'm bringing my thread to the front. Two loose wraps with a brown. I'm tightening up on it. And then the golden one also just two or so wraps to secure it. Now I can take my piece of straw off and what I'm going to do is I just want to clean up the eye of the hook before we continue. Make sure that those hackles are secured properly. And just trim away the excess of those hackles. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my dabbing needle and just parting the deer here roughly in the middle and with that done I'm going to start with my golden Heckle, take it across and over, splitting the DA in effect, bringing it over once behind the DA here, twice, three times, and now I'm going to split the DA again in the same fashion that I've just done when I started. So just part them again, bring it to the front, and then stroking back those fibers do one, two wraps in front. And secure that hacker. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to cut it away right, right away. If something happens and the uh, thread comes loose, you can do it again. I'm just going to tilt my hook a little bit so that the fibers and the thread don't slip off. Now with my brown hackle I'm going to do the same. I start in front splitting my deer hair once then going behind the deer here. Just check that all your deer stays in front of your hackle. Going to go once, 
just pushing those deer hairs forward. So it's once, twice, splitting the deer hair going forward, and then once or twice. in front of the deer here. With that done, I can now come in with my scissors and just trim out those fibers. and also the excess that was left over. Okay, with that done, we're just going to clean up the head. I'm just pulling on those deer here to pull them up. The hackle will fix. do one or two up finishes. I do prefer to put a bit of head cement on as well just to secure it properly. It's a lot of material behind the eye of the hook and um, you don't want it to come undone. I prefer water-based head cement. It just doesn't create that much weight in my opinion. So with that done I will just come in with my fingers and just pull back those fibers from the back to the front. Seeing that we squashed them earlier to, to work in front of the deer here. And just check any trapped fibers and just take them out. I'm just going to take it out of the vise. So if you look at it from the front, you will see that your deer hair is split into two sections, creating the wing kind of shape. And then your hackle goes all around. You will also see that the hackle is much longer than your traditional dry fly, where you would have uh, one and a half the cape of the, of the hook in length. I'm going for two, two and a half, even three, it depends on the turbulence of the water. Um, what this fly is going to do is it's going to sink at the back and these deer hairs for the tail will create the illusion of a shack in the water. Because the body is so dense, it doesn't absorb any water, but it sinks. And then your hackle and your clip springer will float basically in that kind of angle and create the impression of a emerger or emerging mayfly. The next fly I'm going to do now is the uh, dry fly that will be sitting on the water and for that we're going to use a little bit different materials. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned as I'm going to continue with the second fly. Okay, so now for the second part of this video where we are going to tie the adult or the dry fly version of the emerger that we have just done. The same principles apply mostly, but we are going to substitute some of the materials. So to start off, 
we are again laying our thread base. I'm still using the same brown 70 denier thread. Taking my thread up to the bend of the hook. And now I'm going to again take my clip screw with deer here and form a tail. In this instance I'm going for a little bit baggier look, seeing that we want good flotation. Just putting my DA in the stacker to line those tips up. So I'm using a little bit more. Again, the same length as the shank of the hook. A loose wrap. Second loose wrap coming forward to the eye of the hook. And as I continue to the front, I will start tightening up. The reason again is you don't want your tail to display like these in front. So therefore the soft wraps at the back to start with just keeps them all bundled together and then as you advance to the eye of the hook you can start tightening up on your thread wraps to secure them. Okay now that we have tied in the tail we are going to tie in our CDC. We are tying it in right at the tip Make sure that you have a fiber that is long enough to form the whole body of the fly. I'm tying it in at an angle so that it will twist easily. You also see I tie it in in the concave um, shape that it is naturally bending so that you follow that same curvature. With that tied in, we are advancing our thread to the head of the fly where we are going to tie our wings with the deer hair. I'm taking roughly a pencil width of deer hair. In this instance I'm using clip sprunger. The CDC that we tied in is going to form our body but we are going to use the deer hair to create a tapered body as well as the wings on this fly. So with those tips lined up, I'm going to measure it so that it is a hook shank length. And then I tie it in with my tips pointing forward in other words, over the hook eye. Don't spin it. Make sure that it sits nice and flat on top of your hook. And then as I progress my thread down the hook shank, I will start breaking out fibers if you have a strong thread, you can sometimes cut through the deer hair stems. But be careful so that you don't cut through it while you are forming your wings. Otherwise, you'll have to start over again. So as I'm progressing to the back, I'm just trimming out fibers as I go along. It is quite bushy, but that's not a problem for now. We are just forming this body. It is a little bit more intricate. than other flies 
but the overall effect is very very beautiful as you get to the end of the body you will find that when you tighten up on your thread it splays your deer hair and it just makes it a little bit easier for you to come in and trim out those fibers just don't trim out your tail Okay, that seems to be about it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten my thread and advance it back to the eye of the hook to form a tapered body. The deer hair body helps us to number one create a buoyant body and number two is also great material to form a tapered body. Okay with that done I'm just going to tie one or two wraps in front of my DH just to push it up. And then come back just behind the DA. So now what we need to do is we need to form the CDC body. I'm just going to take my echo pliers, just twist it up and then start forming my CDC body. It doesn't really matter if your thread and your DA shines through just gives a little bit more of a mottled look to it but it is important to twist up those fibers so that you create a dense body I'm just trimming out the stem of the CDC and then I will just trim the body. You don't need a sleek sleek body but you don't want a lot of fibers in all directions. With that done, I'm just going to tie in another CDC feather. This time I'm tying it in right on top of the hook shank, just twisting it up and just covering those thread wraps. 
Now this is a little trick. I bring my thread back. I catch my CDC. So I trap my CDC, twisting my thread around it. And now my CD is secured on top of my hook shank. Like a parachute that I can hold up. And now what I do is I bring my thread forward. And I use my CDC to split my deer hair into forming the two wings and by doing that I also create my wing case just check that you don't trap fibers underneath it you want it split right in the middle I'm pulling back on my deer here and I'm pulling down on my CDC in front. Now I can just secure my CDC. And now for the last part. I'm going to tie in my heckle. For my heckle, again I'm using two tones. There is the gold, and there's my brown. I'm tying them in together. Now I'm going to follow the same path that I did with my first pattern, my emerger pattern, just splitting those deer here. And I'm going to go through the middle I'm starting with my brown, it's not really necessary to start with a specific one but I'm going through and around again I'm going through And around the back. Once. And then in front. I'm coming around. Once as well. Out the X's, and now I do the same with a golden feather. I'm going through the middle, just splitting those deer here around the back, coming around the bottom at the back, going back through the middle to the front. 
coming back over behind the deer here. And then in front of my deer here. And secure it. Axis, and now we can form the head. Again, you can use your little trick with your straw, just push it over your thread. Catch all those fibers. And using our finish tool, we can secure the head. hook and there we go we just pull off that straw and there you have it so we have in our first tie the emerger and then on this fly we have the dry version very buoyant, great profile, great flotation and I will soon post a video of fish that I caught with this fly. Hopefully on the emerger and also on this dry. Thank you for watching Fly Tying Step by Step. I hope you enjoyed it. Tie your own flies, fish them. Be sure to like our Facebook page and also to subscribe to our channel. Enjoy your fishing. Bye.